Happy Sabbath, everyone. And whenever I come to a little click fellows church, I feel warm in my heart, even though it's a little chilly here. <laughs> it's a blessed uh, Sabbath. Um, there are blessings and grace in store for you today. So I hope you all encounter the Lord and experience his blessings and grace. Um, let's read. Let's read in Matthew 27, 24 again. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hand in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood. He said, it is your responsibility. Hmm. This scene is where Pilate the Rome governor tells the Jews that he is not guilty of Jesus' death. He declared that he was not responsible for death of the death of Jesus Christ. The Jewish leaders who had arrested Jesus constantly demanded his crucifixion. But Pilate could not find any sin in him. After questioning and investiga investigating Jesus several times, Pilate clearly realized that Jesus had never committed a moral sin. However, he eventually feared that the Jews would revolt, so he handed Jesus over to be cru cru crucified. To fulfill his role as governor, Pilate had to prevent a Jewish rebellion. He did not stop those who wanted to crucify Jesus, an innocent man, to maintain stable rule over the Jews, to demonstrate that he was free from any guilt regarding Jesus' blood. Pilate washed his hands before them. Pilate also ordered that a sign be placed on the cross where Jesus would be hung, king of the Jews. It was not that he wanted to kill Jesus, but that he wanted to convey that Jesus died as the king of the Jews, as the Jew claimed. He wanted to emphasize that Jesus was killed by the Jews, and not by his own responsibility. So he speaks confidently as the Bible says, I am innocent. I'm not guilty. I did what I had to do for peace in the Jewish land. I'm not responsible for this blood of Jesus. Is Pilate really innocent of Jesus' blood? What do you think? Is he not responsible for Jesus' death because he was just doing his job as governor? One day in 1961, an, a man named Adolf Eichmann stood before an Israeli court. He had been working as an auto mechanic in Argentina for the past 15 years. He was a man of integrity and a good father and husband. He seemed like an ordinary person. But in fact, he was a World War II war criminal who escaped from a prisoner of war camp right after the war and fled to Argentina. He was standing at the bus stop on his way home from war as usual when he was apprehended by the Israeli intelligence police. He was the man who helped kill about six million Jews through a highly efficient system he designed. Nonetheless, he continued to insist in court that he was not guilty. His appearance in court was very ordinary and comfortable. He did not seem evil at all. 
making it hard to believe he was a person who participated in killing millions of people. He just seemed like a normal, ordinary person. He said he was simply following orders to carry out the the mission given to him. He claimed that he did not personally kill a single Jew, that he did not order any Jews to be killed, and that he had no intention of killing any Jews. He said he was just faithful to his job. He seemed like a person who was more thorough in abiding by the law than anyone else and, and even appeared pure and kind. If he had been obsessed with a murderer, murder or had a violent personality, people watching him might have felt at easy. If he had shown signs of violence, people would have thought that he had driven millions of men, women, and children to death because of his rough and scary personality. Look at that. He must have killed so many people because he has such a vicious and violent personality. But he was such an ordinary person. One of the Jewish victims was just shocked and even fainted by Ahiman's ordinary and calm words and actions in the courtroom. Instead of cursing the Jews like a devil, he appeared so comfortable and normal that people found it painful to watch him. He argued in court, I was merely a human being an official who followed orders. He said, and continued to plead not guilty. His trial lasted eight months. But there was a philosopher who was watching this trial, and she was Hannah Arendt. After witnessing this trial, she developed a philosophical concept of the banality of evil. She said, is not, she said, evil is not something extraordinary, but can emerge when ordinary people like Ahiman fail to seriously consider the implications of the missions assigned to them by their organizations. He simply wanted to a caring father and a faithful public servant. But the evil was revealed through his good and simple nature. Hannah Arendt said in her book, Ahiman in Jerusalem, that although Ahiman claims innocence, he is clearly responsible and guilty for the massacre of the Jews. On why he was guilty, he said, she said, Ahiman did not have the very general idea that a person cannot kill another person. And he did not know how to think about other people's pain and suffering. He did not acknowledge the fault and take an action to correct it because he did not perceive it as a fault. Let's return to the scripture and consider Pilate. He certainly, his, he certainly fulfilled his duty faithfully as the governor over the Jews. During Jesus' time, the Jewish rebel, rebellion was a significant concern, of, concern for Rome. The governors of Judea made efforts to prevent rebellion by employing various methods and strategies in governing the Jews. Pilate, too, ordered the crucifixion of the innocent Jesus in an, in an attempt to quell the Jewish rebellion. Even though it didn't make sense to kill Jesus, he participated in his crucifixion. Although he had no intention or desire to kill Jesus, he allowed Jesus to die in order to fulfill his duty. 
He didn't think deeply about why the Jews who were demanding Jesus' death wanted him dead so much. Pilate did not ponder why the Jewish leaders who typically opposed him, opposed, opposed him as governor suddenly showed loyalty to Rome. He did not consider why they demanded Jesus' death, claiming he was the king of the Jews. He simply saw the chaos before him and what he believed he had to do. And he handed Jesus over to those who were eager to see him killed. Pilate is not an evil person because he decided to hand over Jesus under unavoidable circumstances. Can we say this? Even though he did what he was supposed to do, he certainly participated in evil deeds. No matter how strong the demand was, he failed to grasp the universal principle that innocent people should not be punished for sins they did not commit. And he did, and, and he hid behind his duties as governor. Just as Ahiman claimed he simply followed, followed orders, Pilate stated that he was not guilty because he merely complied with the demands of the crowd. Washing his hands in front of the Jews did not absolve him of his wickedness. Even though he hung a sign saying, Jesus, King of the Jews, on the cross, his sin were not washed away. Pilate fell into the banality of evil and became an evil person. Now, shall we tell our story? What about you and me? Are we not sinners because we, will, we live diligently and faithfully every day? The Bible states that not only people who break moral and social laws, but also those who harbor anger and hatred in their hearts are terrible sinners. Matthew 5, 22. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. 1 John 3, 15. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. If Hannah Arendt talked about the banality of evil... Jesus seems to be talking about the banality of sin. In our daily lives, we sometimes get angry at someone or say hurtful, bad things. Sometimes even if we don't express it in words, we harbor feelings of hatred in our hearts. However, the Lord says that all of these are terrible sins and are equivalent to murder. Maybe we can talk like this. We just got angry and swore at the person who bullied us. And we hit that person because he hit us. And we hated the person because he hated us. Are you saying we are sinners, that we are like murderers? I'm having a hard time living with these emotions and conflicts that arise every day. But how can I live if even the Lord treats me like a sinner? But everyone, we need to think about this deeply. If we don't, we can fall into sin without even realizing it. We remember 
the harsh words we said to hurt someone who broke our hearts. We recall the, the hateful feelings we had for someone who made our life, lives harder in this difficult world. There are definitely people who make us angry even when we just want to leave quietly. But despite, despite this, we have somehow gone about our daily lives as if nothing has happened. Just because we said something bad to someone doesn't mean they will die. And even if we are angry with someone, we continue to live our lives afterward. Even if our feeling of hatred arises in our hearts, it soon disappears. And we return to our daily routines. We sin like this. But we don't take any action to address it, and we continue living in this way. Unfortunately, we all have encountered at least one person we have hated in our lives. At least. One day, a pastor was giving a first sermon on topic, Love One Another. During the sermon, the pastor asked the congregation, can anyone here who doesn't hate anyone raise their hands? No one raised their hand. Then a very old man raised his hand. The pastor was surprised and said to him, is there really no one you hate? I guess you have believed in Jesus for a long time and have come to love everyone like Jesus. You are truly amazing. The old man replied, there were so many people I hated, but now everyone is dead. <laughs> we want to stop this hatred, which can only be stopped if either the person we hate dies or we die. However, we must admit that in our lives, we sin too easily, routinely, and repeatedly with our words and in our hearts. We cannot excuse ourselves by saying, we weren't feeling well then. We cannot keep making excuses by claiming that our circumstances and situation forces us to become so angry and hateful. We have no choice but to acknowledge how easily we sin in our words, actions, and hearts. We must recognize the fact that the hatred that so often appears within us and, and the bad feelings that arise in our day, daily lives can all become terrible sins. We must acknowledge the fact that hatred and bad feelings can instantly destroy the joy of salvation that we already have. We are ordinary people who repeatedly commit the sins mentioned in the word of the Lord, not just sins recognized by the world. Although we live our lives pretending otherwise, we must accept that we are inevitably sinners. The Apostle Paul also accepted this fact and suffered as he recognized the sin that was present in his daily life. Romans 7, 24, What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? We know very well that the Apostle Paul's confession is the confession of all of us. Interestingly, if we read the word leave, Right to left, it becomes evil. Living can involve a suffering, sin, and evil. As we live as sinners, the words we use to express our thoughts and the actions we take to protect ourselves can cause heart and pain to others. Each day, the unexpressed evil emotions we carry in our hearts shake our faith 
and destroy our joy. Our ordinary thoughts, words, and actions in our daily lives are gradually changing us. I'm sure this, is, this isn't just my problem. Is there anyone here who can say that they are not just like that? Different religions propose various solutions to this problem. But the ultimate freedom from the condemn sin, come on sin, we encounter in our lives can only be attained through Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul clearly outlined how to break free from this sinful existence. Romans 8, 1 through 2. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Through Jesus, we can be free and liberated from this sinful life. Jesus can change us. Jesus can free from recurring, free from us, free us from the recurring anger, hatred, and evil emotions. So we must meditate deeply on Jesus. We must think deeply about the kind of life Jesus lived as a human being like us. Through the life of Jesus, we can learn how he overcame the sin in his heart. How did Jesus protect himself in a world full of evil? And with, that, with what heart did he overcome the hatred and anger toward those who tormented him? I thought about how Jesus treated other people while he lived on this earth and what his method of love was. These are the three ways Jesus loves. Empathy, compassion, and respect. Again, empathy, compassion, and respect. The Lord was someone who empathized with other people's emotions, difficulties, and pain more than anyone else. Are you living with a lot of empathy? When Jesus encountered a Samaritan woman at a well, he approached her with the thirst of a man in need. When the Lord met a woman who could not satisfy her thirst in, thirst in life, he met her as a thirsty person standing next to a well. He shared her pain and showed her the path to life. Our Lord is the creator who made the, the universe, but he came as a human being and loved together, ate together, suffered together, and grieved together. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who, those who mourn. If we can empathize more with the situation and difficulties of the people we are with, we will have a heart that can embrace them warmly instead of hating them. If we can understand why they choose to do such hateful things, we will have love for them instead of hate. Also, Jesus was someone who had compassion for people. He showed compassion not only to those who were sick and suffering, but also to those who tormented and hated him. I hope you and I will try to follow Jesus. Instead of hating the people who make us uncomfortable or give you a hard time, why not show compassion for them? As we try to show compassion for those who act with Malice, the Lord will help us to say things we never thought we would say and do things we never thought possible. How much do you value the people you are with? Do you live with respect for them? 
Do they feel respected by you? Jesus never gave up on those he loved. He loved them until the end and never lost hope for them until the end. No matter how bad someone's current situation is, I want you and me to recognize their value. Respect must not only be felt in our hearts, but it must also be expressed and shown. Please think about the people who are with you at this time. How much respect do they receive from you? If you don't acknowledge them, they may not have many people who will acknowledge and respect them. Maybe you are the only person who respects them. Everyone, let us empathize show compassion and respect the people who are with us just like Jesus. This world is becoming increasingly evil without knowing its end. In this evil and sinful world, we as Christians do not want to contribute to hate and angry adding sin to this world. Our life is not long enough for us to waste it by harboring hateful emotion. Here are some photos of happy moment. These photos where everyone looks happy, have something in common. These photos were taken just minutes before the people in the photos died. The two women above were on a fun car trip together but minutes, late, minutes after this photo was taken, the car flipped over, killing them both. A second sweet-looking mother and son are happily photographed before the plane takes off, but minutes later, the plane crashes, killing them both. The young man in the last photo fell and died on the spot as soon as he took a commemorative photo atop the statue in the square. While they were experiencing these happy moments, they could not have imagined that just a minute later, their lives would end. You and I are people who, li who live like this without knowing anything about what will happen in, few, in a few minutes. So we don't have time to waste on hate. Our time is too precious to miss out on the joy of salvation we have due to bad emotions. Our time is not even enough for love. However, we waste our time too easily and ordinarily with hatred and negative feelings. Hannah Arendt, whom I mentioned earlier, said this in her book, evil has a banal faith. These words trouble us. Why? Because they, sh they showed us that we could become evil in certain situations, even if we believed we were ordinary persons. Everyone, evildoers are not special people. Sin does not become sin only if it appears in the news. We ourselves can become evil, and our words and actions in our daily lives can become sin. It is possible to live a very ordinary life committing sins repeatedly. But even though we live in the, in the banality of sin and commit re repetitive sins in our da ordinary daily lives, the reason we can talk about hope again is because we have Jesus. Our Lord shed his blood on the cross to wash away the repetitive hatred and negative emotions that appear in our daily lives and to restore the, story, the joy of salvation once again. Although we live in the danger of ordinary sin, 
when we constantly try to keep Jesus in our hearts and take the word of God we have heard to heart, the Lord will certainly change our lives through the Holy Spirit. The Lord loves us as we are, even if we are lacking and weak, but He does not want us to stay that way. He wants us to change. When you talk about character changes, do any of you feel like it doesn't apply to you? Are you disappointed because no matter how much you decide and pray to God, there is still no change in, your, your, in yourself? Even if there is no change right now, if we live without neglecting the word of the Lord and try to embrace the Lord in our hearts, we will one day stand before the Lord with the char- change the character. Amen? The desert you see now is the Atacama Desert in Chile. This place is known to be one of the driest places in the world. This desert is so dry that scientists are studying Mars conduct research here. It is so dry that it appears devoid of any life. However, it rains here once every five to seven years. And when it rains, it is said to be heavy rains for more more than 12 hours. And after the rain pours, the dry desert turns into a flower field. Seeds and roots buried deep in the dry desert soil produce this beautiful flowers and fruits. Everyone, are you suffering? Because the negative feelings that repeatedly arise in your heart do not stop even after you pray for a long time. Are you having a hard time because even though you read the Lord's word diligently, your hatred toward someone does not go away? You want to go to church diligently and have a peaceful and stable mind, but do people around you keep giving you a hard time? However, we cannot live as if the repetitive and ordinary sins that occur in our hearts mean nothing. Everyone, wouldn't you like to once again hold on to our Lord, rely on Him, and have hope that we can change? Even if we are in the midst of repeated sins in our daily lives, if we try to have the heart of Jesus and engrave the word of the Lord in our hearts, someday when the rain of the Holy Spirit falls in our lives, flowers will surely bloom in our hearts and our lives will change. The fruit of character change will be evident in our lives. Our Lord will definitely change us through the Holy Spirit. He will transform our lives, which are like a dry desert suffering from the, from the repetitive sins of daily lives into a flower field where flowers of joy bloom. I hope that you and I will hold on to this, on to this promise, rely more on Jesus in our daily lives, and have hope for change. I hope now we have more empathy for people we used to place outside of our thought. Now I hope we have more compassion for those who give us a hard time. Now, now I hope we can live a life with a deeper respect for those who are with us. Our Lord will certainly help you. We cannot do it. But, the, but our Lord has the power to change us. I sincerely hope that your change begins today. Please do not take lightly the anger and hatred that easily arise in our lives, but lay it all down before the Lord and enjoy the joy 
of change through the Holy Spirit. I look forward to seeing you give up easily, ease ordinary daily sins, and be transformed through the Holy Spirit. God bless you all. Thank you.